If you want to move Excel data into Access, you can use VBA to do that automatically. You, you have two choices. You can either export by using Excel VBA or you can import it by using Access VBA. Let's discuss both methods. Uh, if you are not very familiar with VBA, you need much more information than what I'm going to touch to get the more basic ideas. I developed two CD-ROMs that you would need this one to understand VBA in Access better, this one to understand Excel VBA. You will find them at genesispc.com. Let's uh, start at the Excel end. We have on one sheet 92 records, company name, city, country, phone, and we are going to export that into Access. So we create VBA code in Excel. Alt F11 opens up the VBA editor, then insert a module and make sure that you make a reference to the Access library for we have to communicate with Access. Tools, references and make sure that the Access object library is there. And you also need the Microsoft DAO library. You will find that in the listing under Microsoft. If you cannot find it there, or if it doesn't load well, you might have a 64-bit machine. Then browse and look for acdao.dll and import that. Once you have done that, we can start our subroutine from exporting into Access. We declare a variable of the range type in Excel. Two counters and a string type variable. Um, you probably want to activate the sheet where your table is. That happens to be in my case on sheet one. Then we fill O select with the complete table. We can do that by using Excel's input box option. And we say what is the range you want to use. By default, we include the address of the entire table current region starting in range A1. Don't forget that that last argument is set to 8, so it returns a range object. The O select is a range type variable. Then we have to communicate with Access. We need the database engine from the DAO library. We need a database reference from the DAO library and a record set reference. I change the directory of my search boxes to the path of the active workbook in Excel. I assume that my access file is also in that same subfolder. Then we set SPath to whatever file you would like to open in Excel of the access type asterisk.accdb. If SPath is false, that means someone cancelled that get open file name dialog box or the file does not exist anymore, then exit sub. Otherwise, set a reference to a new database engine. Set a reference to the database that is based on SPath. So that is the access folder uh, file in the folder of the active workbook. And we open the record set table suppliers. That's how I called that table in Access. If you name it differently, you have to change that name, of course. There is more coming. This is what we had already. We are going to loop through all the rows in O select, but starting at row 2 to as many rows as the current region has. I assume that the first row has labels. Next I, we add a new record to the record set. And then we look for the columns. How many columns do we have? How many fields? Name, city, etc., etc. So O select columns count. Uh, field 0 is an auto number in my database table. 
So uh, because that first field has to be skipped, we start at one. In Access, everything is zero based. In Excel, everything is one based. One, two, three, four. In Access, zero, one, two, three. We close the 4J loop. And we take from cells I, J and put that in field 1, 2, 3, 4 of the record set. Don't forget to update the record set, otherwise that record will not be accepted. Then we close the database reference, and there is a little more coming. What are we going to do here? We are going to ask the user, do you want to open the table? If they say yes, then we have to do so. The problem is that now we have to talk to Access itself. Set it to a new Access application. If you want to see that table and you do want to, you have to set the application visible is true. You open the current database based on SPATH. And you open the table with a do command option. I called it table suppliers as I said before. I make it read only, for you don't want to change anything in there. And we go to the last record, so I see the entire listing. And I do a do events command, so things have time to be done. Now we are going to do the opposite. We are going to do VBA code in Access, and we are going to export to Excel. As I said before, that first column is an auto number. At this moment, the table has 29 records in Access. The, the best thing to run a subroutine is probably with a button on a form. So I just made this button. That's the easiest way of running macros. Make sure that in this case you create a reference to the Excel object library, whatever version you have on your machine. For now we have to communicate also with Excel, and we are in Access. So this subroutine is in Access. There is the command click event. We declare variables of the record set type DAO. Make sure you have a reference to DAO2, as we discussed before. Then we talk to Excel, an application type, a workbook type, a worksheet type, and a range type. We create an object of the Excel application type, and we re reference it with O. Excel. The file name can be found in the application's current project path if everything is in the same subfolder and give me the name of that Excel file. I call it suppliers.xlsx. If you have another name, change that please. Uh, if you don't want to always have that name fixed, you can also do the following option. You change the directory again to the path of the current project and you get the open file name dialog box. Then the user can choose what the file is nowadays. Then make a reference to a new workbook, open as file, either from this line or from that line, but not both please. Then reference the active sheet unless it's a different sheet, and set O select to the current region starting in cell A1. That means the entire table. And open the record set TBL suppliers in the current database. There's more coming. We loop through all the rows in the Excel table. Then we add a new record to ORS. Then we loop through all the columns. We discussed that before. Don't forget to update the record set. Open the table, table suppliers. We can do that now because we are in Access itself. So it can open this immediately. Then we are going to make sure that the Excel table does not put in records again that were already in there, so we're going to delete duplicate records. And if they say yes, then we call a subroutine that we are going to develop next. 
But before we do that, let's quit OXL. Now delete duplicate records. We do that in two steps. We use the table suppliers that may have duplicate records in it. We create a union query based on that table suppliers. That union query eliminates duplicates and then we change that query into a table. A table that has no more duplicates. We declare two string type variables. Then we make a reference to the query definition as table definition object. We are in access, so we can do that immediately. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't have already from previous actions already a query union and a table no duplicates. So if they exist already, we have to delete them. We, de we loop for all the query definitions in the current database. And if we find a query union already, then we delete that object and exit for. We close the if statement and we close the for each loop. Then we do something similar for the tables, for all the table definitions. If there is already a table called TBL no duplicates, then we delete that, delete that object. And if, next OTD. Now we have to create a query without duplicates and change it into a table. This is what we had so far. We need an SQL statement, a SQL statement. Select company name, city, country, phone from the table suppliers. Use a union keyword and select again company, city, country, phone. Make sure that the ID is not included because the ID is always unique so it will never find duplicates if you had used all fields there. And we do that from the table supplies. Don't forget to put a space before from, before union and before from. Otherwise it looks for phone from and there is no phone from field. Set OQD to a new query definition that we call query union based on that SQL statement. And then we are going to create the table no duplicates. That is the third step. We do that with another SQL statement. We select all the fields into the table no duplicates from. Let's test it. Control Shift E was my shortcut to do this. Is that the range you want? Sure. There is the suppliers database. Open the table. Yes. And you will see that it has now 120 records. So I'm going to do that step again, but this time for access. I'm going to say now we want to import suppliers. Delete duplicate records. And I'm going to say yes. You are about to paste 120 rows into a new table. Yes. Correct. It took all the duplicates out and I have now a table no duplicates and a query union. The query union will only show me individual records. The table no duplicates will only show me individual records. You need to know much more about Access, VBA and Excel VBA. This is just a very specific issue to understand more of the background and to do your own tricks other than this specific one. You need these two CD-ROMs. They have more than 500 slides and guide you for all the issues you could ever dream of.